All right, all. Like the title says, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to overclock your RAM on the ASUS Prime B550MA Wi-Fi motherboard. I'm going to go in and show you how to turn on your DOCP overclocking. That's what this motherboard calls it. Some people call it XMP. On this particular motherboard, they call it DOCP. And if your RAM sticks ain't compatible with the DOCP settings that the motherboard's got set, I'm going to show you how to manually overclock it to where you can still get better performance out of your RAM because everybody knows AMD likes their faster RAM settings. I gotta throw this disclaimer out there. This is a video to show you how to get this done. If you decide to do this, I hold no responsibility for any damage that may be done to your components when you try this. If you do do this, it is all the responsibility falls back onto you. I do have a video on the channel. If you'd like to see me put this system together, I'll put the link up here for you. It's the all, a, all AMD $900 build in late 2020. But if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to run down through the specs of the system for you. That way you know what I'm dealing with. Alright, and of course we're going to start out with the ASUS Prime B550M A Wi-Fi motherboard. The CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. I do have the Cooler Master Hyper T4 cooling the CPU. We have the Silicon Power Ace A55 512 gig SATA SSD in the system. For the RAM, uh, to today's video, we're using the G-Skill Ripjaws 5 Series, 16 gig, 2 by 8 gig sticks, running at 3600 megahertz. This video goes for any any make or model of RAM that you have. If the overclock is going to be the same, the RAM stick should not matter as long as it is overclockable RAM. Um, for video, we have the Gigabyte Radeon RX 5600 XT. To power the whole system, we have an EVGA 500BR 80 plus bronze certified non-modular power supply. And to house everything, we have the Fractal Design Mastified C Mini Black Micro ATX case. Like I said guys, this goes for any set of RAM that you've got, as long as it's overclockable RAM. You don't have to have the Rip Jaws 5 series to be able to do this. This goes for any RAM, any make or model of the RAM that you have. So let me roll that footage of showing you how to get this done, then I'll be back with my conclusion to the video. Alright guys, now since I ran down through the specs and all that good happy stuff with you, I'm going to show you how to get into the BIOS and how to set up the uh, DOCP, which is what this motherboard calls it, for your RAM overclocking. Or if it don't work, well, I'm going to also show you how to manually overclock it. So you get down your power button here, go down your window, go up to power, go to restart, restore it and you keep tapping delete key this says no signal because it's coming through the Elgato capture cords while it's showing that so and that's just an Elgato thing because there ain't no signal going through it all right here we are into the into the BIOS gotta go down here to advanced mode or you can tap F7 on your keyboard to get into this as well and as you can tell, our memory frequency right now is at 2133 megahertz, and there is 16 gigabits or 16,384 megabits. Alright, you go over here to AI Tweaker, click on it. Alright guys, when you get on, well, after you click on the AI Tweaker, you come over here to AI Overclock Tuner. It's set on auto. You need to take this and turn it down to DOCP. Um, it gives you this notice, performance is usually best for memory clock, FCLK is 1 to 1. Maximum FCLK stability is around 1800 MHz, overvolting SOC may cause instability on Gen 4 devices. Okay, we'll go with all that. And then we're going to hit F10 on the keyboard, which is going to be save and reset. And it tells you everything that's changed, so your memory frequency is going to be up to 3600 MHz, your cast legacy is on 18 instead of auto. And then you got your 22, 22, 22, 42, and your voltage is up to 1.35 volts on your DRAM. Which, that, that is what the motherboard took, or that's what the DOPC set it at. And you're going to click OK, and you're going to let it reset here. There we go. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to open up the task manager. And just by left 
right clicking on your bar down here you go up to task manager you go to your performance tab you go down to your memory which is reading 16 gigs of memory and you can see right here to the right of it that says 3600 megahertz to test it to make sure it's stable I'd recommend running something like Prime 95 which tests your CPU and your memory both or if you'd like to run something different uh, they also have uh, Memtest 86 that's a good program to test it for stable abilities but now what happens if your DOPC ain't working for you how do you overclock your memory at that point well go down to Windows go back to power go back to restart keep tapping delete to get into your BIOS alright guys and to show you how to manually overclock it, we're going to go in here to exit change. We're going to load defaults, which is going to put everything in the BIOS back to the way it was. Click OK, save changes and reset the computer. Which shows you everything that's going to change back, which is everything with the RAM. And we're going to hit OK and let it restart. Alright, here we are back on the desktop. We're going to go down here and right click. Go up to your task manager. We're going to go over to performance. Go down to memory, make sure it's highlighted. And right there it is set back to stock, 2133 megahertz. Okay, now since it's running stock, if your DOCP ain't working, this is the way you mainly overclock it. We're going to go down here to the window, go to power, go up to reset, keep tapping the delete key so we can get back into the BIOS. Alright, we're back into the BIOS here, and we're going to go back over here to the advanced up mode. Alright, we're going to go up to AI tweaker, and this AI, the AI overclock tuner is on auto, you're going to need to change that down to manual. Okay, you're going to leave the BCLK the same. Go down here to memory frequency. You're going to, you're going to have a drop down screen here for different speeds. This is a 3600 megahertz kit, so we're going to try for the 3600. Okay, click on that. Then we're going to go down here to the DRAM voltage which you can tell right there saying 1.2 volts because it's on auto we want to change that we're going to put in 1.35 and hit enter which is going to lock that in which is still showing the voltage the same over here for right now but it will change once the system resets go up here to your DRAM controlling DRAM timing control and you can see they're all set back to 15s and the bottom one's a 36 because that's what the RAM runs at frequent. Uh, that's what the RAM runs out out of the box. So we're going to go over to what's this auto on the top one. We're going to put in 22 and hit enter. The next one down. Double click on it. We're going to hit 22. Third one down. We're going to go with 22 and hit enter. And then this one here, we're going to set this one here to 22. Type in 22 and hit enter. And then for this bottom one, we're going to hit, we're going to set it to 42. And you notice that your, make, your RAM megahertz goes up. Your time legacies have to come down to justify for the uh, extra speeds. Okay, so now since we got all that set up, we're going to go back. Alright, and, and we're going to see if it all sets or not. Let's go over to Exit. We'll go over to Save Changes and Reset. And again, it shows you everything you changed. The AI Overclock Tuner, went, we changed from Auto to Manual. Memory frequency, we went up to 3600. We changed the legacy to 22 and the rest of the changes that we made. 
and we did the VRAM from auto up to 1.35 volts and you're going to click OK and see if it reboots into Windows for you. And it looks like it did boot it back into Windows. Go down here to Task Manager, open it up, go to your memory, your performance to memory, and it looks like it took the 3600 megahertz speed. Alright guys, uh, since that's the way I showed you how to turn on DOCP on this motherboard and how to manually overclock it if your DOCP ain't working, um, let me get reset up here and I'll come up with the conclusion to the video. Okay y'all, that's pretty well the way you overclock your M on this motherboard. I showed you how to turn on DOCP, which is the uh, automatic overclock, and then I went in and showed you how to do the manual overclocking if your DOCP don't hold up. If you noticed in your in the manual side, I put in the same exact settings the DOCP had set. There's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, that's a good starting point. You know, if your DOCP ain't compatible with your RAM and your motherboard, that gives you a good starting point. And a lot of times when you manually put in them numbers. It will actually start, it will actually take them in and your system can run at them numbers even though you mainly put them in over just setting the DO, DOCP. But if not, and it still don't want to work for you, that's a good starting point. You may have to go in and loosen up your timings a little bit or turn down your speed a little bit. But, you know, it gives you a good starting point of where to get started on your, D, uh, on your manual overclocking. And also, once you get the overclock to take and you get booted back into Windows, I recommend doing a stress test on your RAM. You know, something like Memtest 86 is a good program to do this with. You see me use Prime 95 for the CPU stress test here on the channel. You can also use that also stress test your RAM as well. That's another good way to make sure your RAM is going to be stable. Of course, the best way to test it, make sure it's going to be stable, is just to use a computer as you use it everyday usage. You know, if you play games a lot, go in and try your games. You know, if your game starts crashing and whatnot, you know, you may have to go in and... Uh, turn back some of them timings or you may have to turn back the frequency of your RAM. Well that DOCP starts out at gives you a good starting point and you kind of go from that point. You know, and like I said, you know, you want to run some kind of stress test on it. You know, I recommend, you know, 12 to 24 hour stress test on it to make sure it's stable. But the best stress test is just to use it as you use your computer on a day-to-day -day basis. And if it starts crashing, you know, and that's and the RAM's the only thing you messed with, then that's going to be what's causing your crashes. I think that's going to wrap up this video. I hope this helped you get the max performance out of your RAM that you paid for. If you like this kind of content, make sure you go down and give me a like. If not, there's that dislike button or that comment section below. I go through them every weekend on my live show here Saturday morning, usually 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S. And if you really like this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on. That way you know next time I put out a video, I'll go live here on YouTube. And if you also be interested, I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. I don't kill your inbox, but I do put up photos of new products I got coming in to kind of give you an idea of what you can expect on the channel. And also, if something that comes up with my live stream, I got to change the time of it, or I got to change the date of it, or something like that. Or if I got to cancel it, that's where I put that kind of information out at. But with all that being said, you all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream.